Hello everyone, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. I'm very excited about this one. I was having, or I was painting another tutorial when I had a revelation. Why have I not come up with a tutorial on painting pine branches, like different types of pine branches? I have one uh, for four techniques on how to paint pine trees, and I think pine branches are equally as interesting. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm first going to show you how to draw them with a pencil because it's uh, just easier to kind of map them out and then we can go ahead and paint them with watercolors. So the first one is a spruce and this one has a long stem with very short and um, multiple of these short bristles and that's roughly what a spruce branch looks like. I'm going to go in a little bit closer so you can see. The second one is a pine. Um, so this one is a white pine and this one grows quite, um, uh, uh, what word am I looking for here? Plentifully. We'll go with that. There's a lot of them in my yard. So it's very similar to this one in that you have a long stem and you have bristles that are very close to one another, but the difference is that these ones are very long. And the way that I like to um, draw or paint them is having them come from like clusters that come from a central location. So and then you can kind of fill in the other parts later on like this, okay? The third one is also a pine, so it also has a long stem, but this pine is one that only has clusters of three needles coming from every point. So we, we just draw one, two, three, and then we leave a small space, and then we draw another three, and you just follow this pattern all the way down your stem. And then the last one is a juniper. So this is a really fun looking one. It has kind of an uneven stem and the branches themselves, this one I would say is actually the most complicated. So it has these little stems coming off of every bigger stem like this, but the stems don't end there. There's tiny little little ones coming off of the the small the ones that are already small sort of like this okay and junipers smell delicious they have these little blue berries on them so those are the four that we're going to be painting today with watercolor okay so I'm going to grab my size one by Windsor and Newton, and I'm going to be using brown to paint the stem. So any brown will do. So let's paint our stem. Now spruce uh, stems or branches have these really cool textures. It's kind of like a, um, I don't know what it's called, but you know in games when there's that big giant and he's carrying this bat looking thing with a bunch of spikes on it? That's sort of what this reminds me of. So, I mean, it's not a bat, but you can add these tiny little white spikes if you want to make the stem even more realistic. That's what a spruce branch stem looks like. And we are going to take, like this is actually one of the very few tutorials where I think colors matter a little bit more than usual. Spruce branches, I mean, they come in a, I'm assuming a variety of colors because there's some bluer ones, maybe then they're not spruce, I, I don't know. But I'm gonna paint mine this nice um, bluish green color. And again, we're painting short and plentiful bristles that are coming from our stem, like this. Okay. 
And it's nice if the stem is actually still a little bit wet because some of that, you see how it bled in? I'll close up here so you can see a little bit better. That green really nicely bled into the um, brown stem. It gave off an, a very nice effect in my opinion. And I'm just going to turn it slightly so I can do the other side as well. And again, you're just flicking your paintbrush. You're starting from your brown stem and you're flicking your paintbrush outwards, creating short bristles until you get to the top. And then you can just end it with one long one at the top. And you can leave it at that. Or if you want to fill in some of the blank space, you can go over it kind of one more time, but concentrating a little bit more in the middle. So instead of doing these really long uh, strokes, I'm just filling in um, some of the white space in the center there. You can even water your paintbrush down a little bit in order to do so. And if you wish, you don't have to, but the brown stem has washed out a little bit, so I am just going to go in and just touch it up a little bit. And make it look like that bat thing again. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that that was not, not on camera. Sometimes I get a little bit too involved in my painting and I don't look at whether the painting is on screen. So that is our spruce. Now I'm going to do, actually I'm going to skip on over to our uh, second pine, the second pine that I drew just because I'm left-handed. So it's easier for me to paint this one first. Again, we're using the brown to paint on our stem. It's going to be a nice long stem again. And then we are going to grab a nice green. I don't know the names of my greens. I know somebody's going to ask. I don't know the names. I threw out the name card a long time ago. But you can darken, if you only have one green, you can darken it by adding a little bit of black. Alternatively, you can make uh, it appear darker by using less water. So I'm going to start at the top. So remember, this is the pine branch that has a cluster of three. So we're going to do start at the top and go one, two, three. And then I'm going to move a little bit down and one, two, three. If it starts to do this um, effect here, it means you don't have enough water on your brush. So just adjust that. Now, I didn't make these, I think, long enough. That's better. One, two, three. One, two, three. And you just continue this all the way down your branch. Now I'm just going back over and just adding one dark needle to every cluster to give it a little bit more detail. Make the branch pop a little bit more. So we are going to move on to our second pine uh, branch. This is a white pine 
And I would say that this is actually one of my favorite ones to paint. So I'm just picking up some black to mix in with my brown. And we're gonna paint the stem on again. See, I didn't pick enough, pick up enough water there. So I'm just gonna go over it one more time. Maybe one more time. <laughs> I'm going to actually quickly go back to this one. I forgot to add those really cute little buttons that some pine branches have at the end. I'm assuming they're the starts of pine cones. Uh, that may be the case. And they're just these little, I'm going to call them buttons, but they're these little protrusions from your stem. And you can just paint a few towards the top. Okay, back to this guy. So this one is going, again, it's a white pine. It's very similar to our previous pine, but this one is, um, the, the pine needles are much closer together. They're, the clusters are much more plentiful, if that's the word I'm going to keep using. <laughs> so I'm just mixing my greens here. And I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to flick my pine branches up like this, or my pine needles, sorry, in every which way. And then I'm going to move down a tiny bit and do the exact same thing. And don't be afraid to, you know, cross some needles over. It's part of the whole effect. And you can see that one looks, this is, this is my favorite one for sure. So the last one is a little bit more complicated. This is a juniper branch. So once again, we are going to take our brown And a juniper branch is a lot more uneven and kind of jaggedy almost. So I'm going to paint, paint it like this. And then I'm going to have, you know, a cluster coming off here. I'm going to have another cluster over here and another cluster here. And each little offshoot here is going to have another few offshoots coming off of it. So you can add maybe three or four, depending how long yours is. And then each one of those little offshoots has tiny offshoots off of them. So I'm going to zoom in close here so you can see what I mean. Um, they're like these tiny little V's almost, but I wouldn't paint them in the same place necessarily because then that would look like a little bit too much like a cedar. Some of them you can paint them in the in the same place. But have maybe three or four 
two, three, or four offshoots coming off of those smaller offshoots. Goodness, I don't know if you can hear my oven, but it's yelling for me. I'm just going to add some little ones um, from the parts in between the bigger offshoots just to make fill up that white space a little bit. Now each one of these little offshoots is going to have this, um, we're not going to achieve the same level of detail as real life because it would take forever and you would need a microscope. <laughs> But these, all of these little guys have these green, um, uh, I don't know what, what you'd even call them, green scales almost on them. And the best and easiest way to achieve them, these scales, is to very, very closely paint this uh, almost snake pattern, I would say. So you kind of paint a line uh, diagonally and then on the opposite side you paint another one almost like little v shapes that are tucked into one another but they're not perfectly a v more like a check mark that's that's a better way to describe it little check marks that are tucked into one another and you're just painting those on top of the little offshoots that you painted already. So if you need a thinner brush, go for it. Alternatively, you can just like paint on top of it. Um, just paint the color on top and forego all these tiny little details. But I think it's worth it because it's what makes it look like a juniper. And we're going to paint these cute little berries afterwards to really finish off the look. Now the stem is very similar to the uh, spruce that we painted at the very beginning. Um, so it's going to also have that scaly looking bark almost, but I'll show you that in a moment. So another way that I started painting this is just painting, so I'll show you on this one, I paint the on top of the black or on top of the brown branch and then I just kind of go in with these lines that come off of it and then I do the same thing on the other side that's a little bit faster I would say. And when you're doing so many it certainly helps. You can also paint the stem in the same way. It can be a little smoother, like you don't have to go as in-depth with the details because I think the branches more than make up for it or the little, you know, offshoots off the main stem. Um, but it does look nice if you just add a few little details. Okay, so once you've done all of that, I realize that's very time consuming, but I think it's worth it. You can take some, uh, some more brown actually, and we're gonna thicken up this stem and make it a little bit more scaly looking. So we're gonna do basically the same motion that we did for the, um, the green part, where we do this check mark shape that are Kind of within one another but as soon as you go onto the green you can you can stop doing that because there's no point of redoing what you've already done so just like this and the final thing i'm going to do is add those adorable little juniper berries they're this beautiful bluish green color And I'm just going to add a few. There we 
there we go and that's about it uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful if you did it would really help me if you subscribe to my channel and hit like on this video as it helps uh, boost me in the youtube algorithm thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next one